Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and for supporting me and for the amazing news that I have over a million views on my channel. That is just it's astounding to me. I'm just absolutely gobsmacked. I had a commenter who asked me to show my shirt. <laughs> I wear all these shirts with sayings on them all the time. And so, um, I, you know, I'm not into self-promotion and I felt like nobody really cares. But apparently some people do. And so um, I'm going to try to do that every day. And of course, I have to do it in every video because not everyone watches every video. And so... Here we go. <laughs> a lot of my shirts are, are self-deprecating for elderly people. And there's a reason for that because I think laughter is great medicine. So, and if you can't laugh at yourself, who are you going to laugh at? I mean, come on. <laughs> who else is there to laugh at? Anyway, let's get to the news. The first item that I have on the agenda for today is an article titled Counterpopulism Behind CIA Role in Social Media Censorship. We've talked about this before, about how the CIA has gotten involved in censoring information inside America, which is completely outside their charter. But this article really bugged me, and I'm going to read it to you. The idea that the U.S. intelligent community which is comprised of 18 government agencies, inclu including the Central Intelligence Agency, carries out influence operations in the United States is a conspiracy theory, say journalists and anti-disinformation researchers. There is no evidence in the Twitter files or elsewhere that the CIA and other intelligence agencies have improperly interfered in domestic policies, they say. Now, this is something about the media that just bugs me to no end. You will hear this phrase a lot without evidence. They say that people are making claims without evidence. For example, they say that the claim that the 2020 election was rigged is without evidence. And that statement is absolutely false. There is evidence. The problem is no one has ever vetted it to see if it's actually legit or not, and whether or not it, it did have an impact. They just didn't even bother to look. But they were certainly willing to say, it's false, it's a lie, there's no evidence. And they do that a lot, the journalists and these so-called misinformation experts. What they are is censorship experts. Second paragraph. But the Twitter file CIA reveals what, that they did. The Twitter file CIA showed how the main in investor in a censorship consulting firm, Aletheia Group, which tried to take over Twitter's content moderation and subjugate it to the IC, is on the board of the CIA's venture fund. The mission of the CIA's fund in QTEL is not to make money, but rather to support the CIA's mission, which is, quote, to gather and share intelligence to protect our nation from threats, unquote. Althea Group's top analyst came right from the CIA, and its other top analyst was an intelligence analyst for the Department of Defense. The, the relationships between our government and non-governmental agencies and political activist agencies, organizations, is incestuous. It's unbelievably incestuous. People go from the government to the private industry and back to government, back to private industry. And how can they possibly, unless they're an extremely ethical person, separate those two roles? They can't and they don't. And the two individuals within Twitter who advocated and arranged for the hiring of the Aletheia group were the former general counsel of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and a longtime DOD research and development executive. The latter, quote, engaged with members of U.S. intelligence agencies 
and sought to enter a formal agreement that would allow him to work with them and provide information to them, unquote, according to Twitter executives. So, you know, when they tell you there is no evidence, what they're actually telling you is we're not looking for the evidence because we don't want to know the truth. We want to keep you in the dark. And so that's what it means, essentially. This next article is titled World Avoids Disastrous Pandemic Treaty for Now. I didn't highlight anything in this, but uh, you should read this. Basically, the World Health Organization, which is a part of the United Nations, is trying to get the nations of the world to sign a treaty which basically, essentially, hands over the power to handle pandemics to them. And given how poorly they handled the COVID pandemic, do we really want to hand over power over pandemics to them? I wouldn't think so. Uh, first of all, I think that the sovereignty of, of sovereignty of individual nations is important. It's important to the nations. It's important to the citizens of those nations. And anything that is uh, extra national, that that wants to put a layer of bureaucracy over top of the nation that you live in is a threat to your nation, period. I don't care who it is. I don't care what their ideas are. I don't care what their mission is. I don't care what their goals are. The fact is they are a threat. I've talked about this before. When it comes to government, the government you have the most control over is the local government that you're at the place that you live, the city, town, whatever it is. The next, uh, form of government that you have some control over but less control than the local is what we, we call in the United States county in other nations they call them provinces it's the overriding governmental body that that oversees all of the towns and cities and municipalities as you move up the chain from there to the state to the nation to the international you get farther and farther away from the decision makers and you have less and less power to change their minds. It's just dangerous and it's something we should never consider. Second article, the radical anti-Israel Jewish voice for peace. This is an article from Upward News and an Upward News review finds that anti-Israel organization Jewish voice for peace has a consistent pattern of endorsing terrorism and Hamas, particularly within local chapters, calling into question its credibility as a Jewish organization that supposedly seeks peace. You know, this is a typical uh, situation with a lot of these organizations. They claim that they're for peace, but really they're advocating for the bad side, the evil side, to win. These people actually want Hamas to beat Je uh, Israel. They want Israel off the map. Despite outward appearances, JVP has embraced strikingly radical stances. Two days after Hamas' October 7th massacre in Israel, when it killed 1,200 people and took more than 240 hostages, JVP's chapter at Columbia University wrote, in conjunction with Students for Justice in Palestine, that it, quote, stands in full solidarity with Palestinian resistance against over 75 years of Israeli settler, settler colonialism and apartheid, unquote. At George Washington University, the JVP chapter was more direct. On October 11th, it wrote, quote, this is an active moment of decolonization. As such, our solidarity with Palestine must encompass any and all modes of resistance they use in their efforts toward liberation, unquote. It further stated that, quote, challenging the modes of resistance presently unraveling in Palestine is unmistakably a stance against Palestinian livelihood and liberation, unquote. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing. But that's what they stand for. So they're neither Jewish nor are they for peace. And yet the name is Jewish Voice for Peace. 
This is very typical of a lot of organizations that use a name that transmits a message to you that you think is positive and is uplifting. And when you get underneath the sheets and you look at them carefully, you find out they're for exactly the opposite of what their name says they are for. And finally, I have this article. Um, this one's kind of, well, it's localized to the United States, I think. I don't know. Maybe you guys know about this all over the world, but I just thought it was kind of funny. Judge Judy drops a truth bomb on the left. There's just one reason for out-of-control crime. Now, this is excerpted from a Breitbart article. Uh, court TV icon Judy Judge Scheinman is decrying how America's out-of-control crime rate is ruining our great cities and ripping the left-wing policies causing it all. Oh, I know how we got here, she said. When society started to make excuses for bad behavior and react to criminality based upon the excuses, it fell apart. When you have district attorneys who are charged, whose job it is to do justice, but to keep the community safe. When you have elected district attorneys who don't know what their job is, they should go find another job, she ra railed. If you don't know Judge Judy, she's had a show on American TV for a long, long time. Um, long, long time. I think more than 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. But um, it, it's a small claims court. And she is, uh, how should I put this, delightfully blunt. She, she calls people ignorant to their faces. Uh, she, she looks them in the eye and says, you have no case. Your case is ridiculous. I don't even know why you brought it to this court. Those types of things. So that's why people love her because she's so, so brutally honest and frank. She has people in her courtroom who uh, when she questions them and finds out that they're what we call on the public dole. In other words, they're getting all of their income comes from the government. She says, it's not your money. It's the government's. It's ours. We're the taxpayers. We're giving you that money. It doesn't belong to you. And you shouldn't be abusing it. So I just thought you might get a kick out of that. If you know Judge Judy, you probably will get a kick out of it. Anyway, I pray for you, every single one of you, that you will have an abundant life, that you'll live a long time, that you'll be healthy, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again if you're not already. I pray for the same thing for every single person that you love. And most of all, I pray that you will be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.